Hey everyone, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. In this video, I am going to explain you all about glycogen storage disease type 1. In that glycogen storage disease type 1A, that is Von Gerke disease. Let's get into all the details of Von Gerke disease. So before I take you into Von Gerke disease, so I am going to briefly explain you what is the function of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme which is deficient in Von Gerke disease and where it is located. So let's jump into a little bit of that particular detail. Now glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme it is there in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticular basically attached to the endoplasmic reticular membrane towards the luminal side. Now, whenever the glucose 6-phosphate has to be converted into glucose molecule, so generally this happens whenever we are in fasting condition because when we go into fasting condition, there are two processes that will help in maintenance of our blood glucose. One is gluconeogenesis, other is glycogen degradation. So, when the glycogen degradation is going on, so the glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate in the cytoplasm. This glucose 1-phosphate further converted into glucose 6-phosphate and that glucose 6-phosphate has to go into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum to be converted into glucose because glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, it is there in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. Similarly, for gluconeogenesis, when the non-carbohydrate sources like alanine, lactate, propionyl, CoA or glycerol ultimately when they are converted into glucose 6-phosphate, glucose 6-phosphate has to go into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum to be converted into glucose. And for all, so, so for both the processes, gluconeogenesis and glycogen degradation, you need glucose 6-phosphatase as the final enzyme and that is there in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. That means glucose 6-phosphate has to go into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum and that needs T1 translocase protein. And the when, once the T1 translocase protein allows this glucose 6-phosphate into the endoplasmic reticulum, glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme which is located in the endoplasmic reticular membrane, it is going to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose and inorganic phosphate released and the inorganic phosphate comes out of the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm by T2 translocase protein and the glucose comes out into the cytoplasm by T3 translocase protein. So like this we need glucose 6-phosphatase, we, we need T1 translocase protein, T2 translocase protein and T3 translocase protein. So if there is a mutation in a gene called G6PC gene which is coding for glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme that will give rise to glycogen storage disease type 1A called Von Gerke disease. Now if there is a mutation in a gene coding for T1 translocase that will give rise to glycogen storage disease type 1B. And similarly, although are very rare, so if there is a mutation in T2 translocase that will give rise to glycogen storage disease type 1C and if there is a mutation in T3 translocase that will give rise to glycogen storage disease type 1D. So like this, there are four types of glycogen storage disorders type 1A, 1B, 1C and 1D. 1A and 1B are the most common ones that are mentioned in the books. Now out of this, we are going to go into glycogen storage disease 1A and 1B. Now in 1A, there is a deficiency uh, in uh, glycogen storage disease type 1A, there is a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So that means glucose 6-phosphate that come from gluconeogenesis process or glycogen degradation under fasting condition, it simply accumulates in the cytoplasm because glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is not available in the endoplasmic reticulum or it is simply mutated. So what will happen to the glucose 6-phosphate in the cytoplasm? It simply builds up. It is not converted into glucose. So that means what happens? Under fasting condition, patient, the person will have fasting hypoglycemia because gluconeogenesis, glycogen degradation, both are not supporting to the maintenance of blood glucose. Uh, because the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is deficient, that's why a person will have fasting hypoglycemia, one of the important signs that you look for in Von Gerke disease. So that means uh, gluconeogenesis is down, glycogen degradation is down, fasting hypoglycemia is seen and this fasting hypoglycemia, it will give rise to hypoglycemic seizures or hypoglycemic convulsion. That's one of the sign you see in Von Gerke disease. Now then let's see what happens to that elevated levels or accumulated glucose 6-phosphate. 
Now this accumulated glucose 6 phosphate it will be diverted into glycolysis in the cytoplasm ultimately making pyruvate and uh, intermediate of the glycolysis is dihydroxystone phosphate. Now what happens to the pyruvate? Pyruvate it can go into acetyl CoA formation thereby TCA cycle can go on initially but when citrate builds up in the TCA cycle citrate will move out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm citrate breaks into acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate by citrate lyase enzyme and the acetyl CoA there it is diverted into fatty acid synthesis it is diverted into cholesterol biosynthesis and the fatty acid can combine with glycerol 3 phosphate that can come from dihydroxystone phosphate as i told you uh, dihydroxystone phosphate is one of the intermediate in the glycolysis process so uh, dihydroxystone phosphate is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate in the endoplasmic reticulum by glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and that glycerol 3 phosphate it is acting as a backbone for triacyl glycerol synthesis. So, the fatty acids coming from acetyl CoA in the cytoplasm which is con basically coming from mitochondria as citrate citrate converted to acetyl CoA and acetyl CoA is diverted into fatty acid that fatty acid is esterified with glycerol 3 phosphate to make triacyl glycerol. So, there will be build up of triacyl glycerol and then cholesterol uh, acetyl CoA diverted into cholesterol side. So, cholesterol uh, is esterified uh, with the fatty acid to make cholesterol ester in the endoplasmic reticulum. So, cholesterol ester. So, there is increase in triacyl glycerol, increase in cholesterol ester. All this will be getting into the blood in the form of VLDL because in the uh, glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme, it is located in three tissues. So, mainly in the liver and then the kidney and in the small intestine. So, what will happen? So, the cholesterol ester and triacyl glycerol loaded VLDL. So, they will be elevated in the blood. So, I ultimately giving rise to hyper triacyl glycerolemia and hyper cholesterolemia. So, overall it is a hyperlipidemia condition and this hyperlipidemia is one of the important sign that we see in Von Gerke disease and uh, patients may show cutaneous xanthoma. So, basically accumulation of fatty material beneath the skin we call them as xanthomas. Xanthomas is one of the sign we see in Von Gerke disease and also Von Gerke patients will show basically the child with Von Gerke disease will show uh, full cheeks which is called as apple cheek or chubby cheeks. So, and the thin extremities. So, it is a kind of abnormal fat distribution going on and these patients will show uh, accumulation of glycogen in the liver, glycogen in the kidney. Why? Because elevated glucose 6 phosphate it is uh, positively acting on glycogen synthase enzyme because glucose 6 phosphate is a positive modulator on glycogen synthase thereby more and more glycogen is synthesized uh, and the glycogen degradation will be decreased. Why? Because same glucose 6 phosphate will have a negative effect on glycogen degradation enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase. So, thereby more glycogen is accumulated in the liver and kidney and that will give rise to hepatomegaly and renomegaly and that is why in Von Gerke patients we will see hepatorenomegaly that will give rise to protuberant abdomen in these uh, patients. So, that is why uh, glycogen storage disease 1 it is referred as hepatorenal glycogenosis. Now, what are the other signs we are going to see here? So, some of the pyruvate other than going into acetyl CoA is also diverted into lactate and there will be more lactate accumulated in the tissue ultimately appearing in the blood giving rise to lactic acidosis. So, lactic acidosis eventually can give, uh, give rise to metabolic acidosis along with the ketone bodies. Why? Because acetyl CoA can also be diverted into ketone bodies formation that is acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate formation and acetoacetate, beta hydroxybutyrate and lactate all of them are acidic molecules ultimately they will give rise to metabolic acidosis and the consequence of metabolic acidosis. One of the consequences is hyperventilation. So, patients with Von Gerke disease may show hyperventilation one of the sign there. Now, so since there is lactic acidosis here, so lactate is elevated. Note that in the kidney lactate is going to compete with uric acid to make hyperuricemia. So, there will be hyperuricemia sign in 
uh, Von Gerke disease and the hyperuricemia will give rise to gouty arthritis because uric acid crystallizes in the um, uh, joint space. So, patient may show uric acid crystals in the joint space giving rise to gouty arthritis or arthritis signs and symptoms and also uric acid crystals can be seen in the urine also. So, this, this is the other, other another important sign that you see because of elevated uh, lactate there giving rise to hyperuricemia. And then uh, some of the glucose 6 phosphate is diverted into pentose phosphate pathway or HMP shunt, uh, hexose monophosphate shunt. So, in the pentose phosphate pathway what happens? So, more and more glucose 6 phosphate diverted into pentose phosphate pathway and that will give rise to increase in NADPH plus and increase in ribose 5 phosphate. So, NADPH plus is needed for fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol biosynthesis. So, it is supporting fatty acid synthesis and cholesterol synthesis there, thereby increasing triglycerides, cholesterol esters contributing, uh, contributing to hyperlipidemia which I have already explained to you. And what about ribose 5 phosphate? Ribose 5-phosphate is uh, diverted into PRPP formation, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate formation and this PRPP is a positive modulator on uh, purine nucleotide biosynthesis and pyrimidine nucleotide biosynthesis. So, there will be increase in purine synthesis, increase in pyrimidine synthesis. So, excess purines degradation product of purine is uh, uric acid. So, that will also contribute to hyperuricemia that is seen in Von Gerke disease patient. So, all these are the signs that we see in Von Gerke disease patient. So, what are the laboratory signs? Patient will show hypoglycemia under fasting condition, lactic acidosis, uh, hyperlipidemia and ketoacidosis, hyperuricemia. Now, what are the clinical signs and symptoms? So, patient will show proturubrant abdomen because of hepatorenomegaly, uh, full cheeks or apple cheeks and cognitive impairment is seen in Von Gerke disease patients. So, there will be thin extremities uh, and then gouty arthritis signs and symptoms, xanthomas can be seen because of hyperlipidemia and metabolic acidosis giving rise to hyperventilation signs. What is the treatment for Von Gerke disease? So, Von Gerke disease, uh, before I go to the treatment, so let me explain you uh, what is glycogen storage disease 1B. Glycogen storage disease 1B is because of uh, defect in uh, T2 transporter in the endoplasmic reticular membrane. So, that means glucose 6-phosphate is not entering into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. So, signs and symptoms are very similar to Von Gerke disease which I have explained glycogen storage disease 1A. Additionally, uh, type 1B patients will show neutropenia, neutrophil uh, dysfunction, platelet impairment, all this will give rise to risk of bleeding, uh, infection, risk of infection. So, uh, and patient may show uh, frequent epistaxis and all that bleeding in the nose and all. Though that is the additional sign along with Von Gerke disease type 1A signs, type 1B has all these additional signs here. Now, what is the treatment for glycogen storage disease 1? There is no specific treatment here. Gene therapy is under research including uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, gene modification technique also. Now, the symptomatic management includes taking care of hyperuricemia by giving uh, allopurinol which is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor, taking care of hyperlipidemia by giving phenofibrate, orlistat or ezetimib. These are the drugs that are used for uh, hyperlipidemia and then uh, taking care of hypoglycemia by frequent meals or uncooked car starch can be given, nasic gastric tube and frequent infusion of the glucose can be given just to avoid uh, hypoglycemic uh, seizures and antihypertensive medication can be uh, is uh, generally given in Von Gerke patient. So, this is all about Von Gerke disease and also I have covered glycogen storage disease 1A that is Von Gerke and 1B also I have covered and briefly I have explained you 1C and 1D. That is about it and I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, uh, glycogen storage disease type 1. That is about it and uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, consider subscription to this channel. I will see you in my next video. Till then you take care.